Hi, I'm John Biggs with TechCrunch. We're sitting here with Andrew Arenheimer. Yes. Uh, you are one of our Crunchies winners for public service. And you were sitting around here. We wanted to get you on screen because essentially something really, really crazy is about to happen to you. Is that correct? Yep, I'm going to prison. All right. Yeah, it's, uh, it's quite a shame. So you essentially ran a iteration of a website on AT&T's web address on AT&T's on AT&T's servers that basically just gave you phone numbers and UUIDs or whatever for for each of these yes there was, iPad 3G's there was a, a public API on an AT&T web server and on a on a URL there was a number at the end and if you would increment that number by 1 you would see the next iPad 3G user's email address mm -hmm. and I, I say hey it's it's bad for AT&T to publish a target list of iPad 3G users. I mean, I, I do security research. This is, this is what I, I what I do, and, and so I take a sample list data and I give it to a journalist because hey, big company puts you at risk. You deserve to know it, and they deserve to be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. uh, federal prosecutors disagree. Okay, uh, so I mean, the obvious, as a security researcher, is these guys basically send try to contact companies as much as possible yeah. and I am in no way defending what's about to happen to you it's ridiculous but what happened between that that moment when you started that iteration and and decided to go to I guess it was Gawker or whoever I first I, I waited for AT&T to patch the vulnerability mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the timeline was was after they patched then I went to Gawker because yes they patched it and it was closed but it doesn't mean somebody didn't scrape the data beforehand and you as a consumer have the right to be informed so that you can make an informed decision on your purchasing or, or you've already bought a device and, and you might want to consider changing your email address or getting a new SIM card from your, from your provider. And, uh, and really, companies have no incentive to tell you there's a problem. I, they only do it when the law explicitly defines, like the law tells, says in, in a couple states at least, if they leak your social security number, then they have to tell you. But that's not that's not a universal. And and they AT and T has every incentive to not inform you as a consumer, and and to have me thrown in prison for doing so. Mm -hmm. So you pled not guilty. I went to trial, and uh, and uh, I was found guilty on two consecutive five-year felonies. Okay. So what do you think is next? Uh, I imagine I'm probably going to prison. You know, okay. it's uh, it's it's a shame, but uh, I, I'm in a war. You know, this is this is a battle for our culture. Uh, it's a battle for our liberty, and and you don't enter into a war and you know never expect to be a casualty. It's 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 this is about it's about freedom. It's about the, the the spirit of freedom that pervades Silicon Valley communities. Uh, it, it must be fought for. The, my my life is insignificant compared to the Constitution. Mm -hmm. I think the irony is, is that we're in a we're at a stage in, especially in Silicon Valley, in the growth of these startups, where a lot of these guys kind of thumb their noses at a lot of laws, and <clears throat> Airbnb, Uber, say what you want about what they're doing, they're essentially saying, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to disrupt this this uh, this thing, and a lot of ink has been spilled on either side of that. I'm personally more supportive of them doing this, exactly what you said. This is a war we're trying to we're trying to. Uh, work through our freedoms, yeah. not maintain our freedoms, but work through and figure out where we stand. Uh, when you get out, what's next? Well, uh, there, there's a couple things that, that I'd like to do. There's two, there's two vehicles by which I could defend effectively uh, civil liberties in America. The, the first is, is Congress. There is congressional immunity for anything that you enter onto the Federal Register. So in the future, I would hopefully be able to to inform consumers on the Federal Register and they can't hold a grand jury, they can't indict me. Whatever you say on the floor of Congress is entirely protected. Uh, the, the other interesting proposition is the county sheriff has a, has a unique ability as a superpower. He can form a posse. So if, if the feds come into town to limit the rights of law-abiding citizens, say marijuana growers in, in California, then uh, then the sheriff can give all of the marijuana growers a shotgun and say, let's have let's have a standoff. I think that there's a lot of possibility in the future for uh, for states to enforce their rights and, and uh, individuals to to continue working to free information. And I, I definitely uh, have some ideas on how to pursue that. All right, it'll be very very interesting. I appreciate you coming on. We really appreciate your work. I personally find it 
it's abhorrent what's going on. And I wish you the best of luck. Hopefully, uh, hopefully when you come back, and it'll be fairly soon, we can, uh, we can have another chat and we'll figure Absolutely. what comes next. Absolutely. All right. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Thank you. Thanks.